Hey everybody, it's another episode of Go Flix Yourself. My name is Ben Conowitz, and with me as always is the vixen to my Rudolph, Bradford Omen. Hey, that's me. <laughs> what? Is that what vixen sounds like? You bet your ass it is. Oh my god. Vixen is the sexiest reindeer. <laughs> and uh, uh, to my left, the dancer to my Rudolph, Nate Laux. I just forgot that Dancer was a ro- like a reindeer until now. I'm like, that is not even a name of a reindeer. That's the song he danced Hey, we're going to the Bulls. We're going we're gonna to dance to that song in two days. Yeah. Do they, do they play the Six Flags songs at the Bulls game? Yeah. Big sponsor. Big corporate sponsor of the Bulls. Perfect. Six Flags. Gurney Mills. Makes sense. Go Bulls. Uh, we are going to the Bulls game, though. We're going to go Thursday. They're going to play the, the Spurs with, uh, with... A young talent. There's yeah. a young talent on that team. David twin. Robinson. No. You're a little... Tim no. Duncan. <laughs> a few Decades out of touch. Uh, Victor Wembanaya, I believe, is how you say his name. I'm going to say that out loud. <laughs> Wembanaya. He's like eight foot nine. He's like he's like a, a, a monster from Space and, Jam. Came and can to run life. the point guard position. He somehow. really can. He, it's <laughs> ridiculous. I just can't wait to see this guy play. Uh, but that's that's why we're going. We're going to have a good time. Our good uh, buddy uh, Mike Flores is also going with us. Is Dennis Todd? Rodman still doing anything with the Spurs? <laughs> uh, no, or the, nor the Bulls. Nor the Bulls. Nor the Bulls. Nor the Bulls. Oh, he's, he's with the Pistons again. But good that you knew that he did play for I'm both really the Spurs you, and the Bulls. I'm really of proud of you. Yeah. Brad's got 90s Bulls basketball Let, knowledge. No, no, no sure. not just 90s Bulls basketball knowledge, just 90s NBA knowledge for days. Did you watch the, uh, what was it, Inside the NBA? Mm-hmm. With uh, Hannah Storm and uh, Ahmad Rashad. Ahmad Rashad back in the day. I know those names. I was. I never really. Was I like watched a, it every Saturday. Did you watch it? I watched it every no. single Saturday. I was. I was never like a, a game analysis person. Was, I just liked watching the game. But that was well before the internet. So you. That was how you got your inside information. Yep. Yep. It'd be like, oh, sure. oh, you know, Michael Jordan's mom liked to bake cookies. I would never know that if I didn't watch Ahmad Rashad on Inside the NBA. There you go. He was married to Felicia Rashad, or is married. Just wanted you to know that. I this is a movie podcast where we talk about the latest films we've seen. We talk a little, a few trailers. Uh, if there's time, we play a game. No one wrote a game this time. And guess what? Um, I have a special announcement. Mm-hmm. Because this is this is technically our our well, it, well, it's not technically. This is what we're calling our 200th episode. Right? Is now. it the 200th? Well, this by, is the 200th. By episode. numbers, it is the 200th episode. But, but it's really the 199. Yeah, because we never did a proper 100th episode, so we're still off kilter, and we haven't done the proper anniversary celebration. So for what that I'm thinking, one. if you guys are cool with it, I think the next time we record, and I'm not sure when that will be. Well, it'll, the, it'll the, be in January. The holidays are coming up. Yeah. Um, it's the holiday season. So whoop de doo oh and snickety snout. <laughs> Don't worry, I'll bring in the gout. Yeah. Hey, hey. Yeah. All right. So you're, anyway. you're you're prepping yourself for I'm, a song tonight. Oh boy. No, I'm not. Do- no, there's no there's no game. No, we don't do the song for the game. We do it for the trailers. We've never yep. done that. Yep. It literally happens every episode. <laughs> <laughs> do, do I need to remind time. you? Trailer time. Trailer time. Do I need to remind yeah. you of your trailer? Yeah. Wait, let's 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 hold off. <laughs> Reel it in. Let's hold off the magic for another couple of half an hours. All right. What I thought was for the for our actual 200th episode. You do it live and in the nude. Well, yes and no. What we should do, I I want to bring back a, like an all games episode. So I think that I'm going to write the Leonard Moulton game and the IMDb game, and I'll bring a couple special guests, and we will have our our, our official 200th episode where we play some games. What do you think? Sure. I, I think that's perfectly fine. Although technically it would be our official 100th episode, and then we still have to do something for two. Fair enough. So sure. I love it. All right. Uh, so anyway, uh, before we get any further into the show, I think this is probably the one of the, the longest we've gone without introducing our, our official corporate sponsor. Brad, did you did you have a sponsor for this week, buddy? Uh, you know, Ben, let me ask you something. It's the holiday season. So whoop de doo snickety snack. Uh, speaking of snickety snacks, no. <laughs> you better riggedy wreck yourself. Uh, now, we, we've talked about the, the elves for food groups before. We actually have, so yeah. I'm not going to shit on that. Uh, <laughs> of course we have. Yeah, yeah. yeah. What, what are they again, Nate? Uh, candy, candy corn, uh, candy canes, canes and, and syrup. syrup. That's that's right. Good job, fellas. Uh, and I'm I'm bringing this back because I have another official elf treat 
for you guys. It's the 20th anniversary of Elf this year because we're old as fuck. Uh, <laughs> and there is an official Elf snack from Pepperidge Farm. It is Goldfish. This is a limited edition holiday flavor. Goldfish. And I'm, so it's going to be Goldfish. It's just Goldfish. So. No, no, it's not just Goldfish. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to give you give you guys the bag so you can so pull a snack you know out. Pe- Don't look at the front of the bag. Pepperidge Farm remembers Goldfish don't. Mm-hmm. That's exactly right. So that's why they have a partnership. Yeah. So I'm going to hand the bag to Ben, and he's going to grab it. Don't look at the front of the bag or the or the one side so you don't see the flavor. Uh, I'm sure you're going to be able to guess what it is just by the smell because it, it is a strong Potent. scent. Potent. Yes. Don't look, Nate. Don't look at the bag. Don't, look, don't, you, ruin, don't you ruin the surprise. You look right into each other's eyes as you eat those snacks. <laughs> <laughs> this is French toast. No, now, come on. Think about the elf for, for elf food groups. This is syrup. syrup. I taste some syrup in here. Yeah, you can smell the syrup too. It is strong. It, yeah, these are maple syrup grams from from Pepper Farm. They're goldfish that are flavored like maple syrup. Nate's gonna eat the whole bag. I'll bet because he, he's loving them. No, they are really good though. The graham cracker as a base actually, they honestly taste like pancake uh, snacks. Like I actually, I, I love the mix of the graham with the the syrup flavor. Yeah, those aren't the worst snack you brought. Yeah, they're pretty. Uh, Nate, what do you, or, uh, Ben? What do you think? I think I think they're okay. You think they're just okay? They're okay. You always really good. Um, those uh, ketchup Pringles you brought in that one time. Hey, if I were you, I would uh, be on the lookout because right now Lay's has brought back ketchup chips in the states. Right now, there are you can see them in gas stations and in stores and stuff like that. Okay. Those are equally okay. as good as the Pringles. Now, if you're out and about and you see one in the wild, you text me. I'll just I'll just grab some for okay. you. Okay. Yeah, right. I do. Love I'll it. be your buddy. Thank you. Get you some ketchup Thank you, chips. Pal. Thank you, pal. Ah, I'm glad you're on board because they need to bring ketchup chips to the states all the time. Uh, we have a special guest in the peanut gallery. Uh, my friend Ashley is here. Ashley, uh, did you enjoy the uh, the the goldfish? Uh, what were they? Goldfish? What? Pepperidge Farm? They're crackers. Yeah, crackers. Gold, goldfish grams. You had one. Were they good? I thought that maybe there was going to be cheese mixed with it. No, there's oh, yeah, yeah. No, no cheese mixed with it. But that's actually a good call because they did look like it should have had it. Yuck! <laughs> Yuck! Why would you ruin just the thought of it? Cheese and syrup. I thought it was going to be a joke, like one of those jelly bellies. Yeah, that this podcast is stupidly famous. To be fair, that's something I would do. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But you know, I'm really glad you brought up the peanut gallery because I, you know what, it's 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 a holiday season, and I wanted to (laughs) I want to give you guys a bonus Mm, gift. Oh boy. This, this is a gift. It's a second sponsor, surprise sponsor, guys. Guys, and, we're doing really well. And it just so happens- Honestly, the number of companies that organically mm-hmm. and truly want to sponsor us, it's fantastic. Yeah, we really kill it. It just so happens that this is from, from Blue Diamond Almonds. So, first of all, thank you, Pepperidge Farms. So, this mm-hmm. is a sponsor of the Peanut Gallery. I like almonds. Because the are, Peanut Gallery sponsor- Because these are nuts. And paying so, for your seat at the table, Ashley. So, go ahead and grab these. No, don't, sure. Don't look don't at the front. The, grab the nuts. Don't, yeah, grab my nuts and don't look at the front. Don't spill them either with your big sausage fingers. Soft, soft. sausage fingers. Big soft sausage fingers. That was that was Ben's nickname in college. <laughs> Go and just chomp on these nuts. Let me know what you think. You hear that crunch? That's how you know it's a strong nut. Oh, these are good. You should you should definitely give me these. <laughs> what is that? What is that? What do you think it is? I, I honestly don't know. No. Oh. Hold on. It's a. I'll give you a hint. It's a holiday flavor. Is that peppermint? No, no it's not peppermint. Not Do you peppermint. taste any mint on those? Nuts? I don't know. I'm guessing. What's wrong with your tongue, Jack Daniels? <laughs> it is. I'm gonna say, um, it is. Nate's, uh, Nate's getting in tune with the flavor spirits. <laughs> closing his eyes. My 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 flavor palette is uh-huh. a little messed up right now. But what do you got, um, what do you got Gordon Ramsay? Um, it's butterscotch. Not butterscotch either. There, there's a gram in there, isn't there? There's, a, there's you're, you're getting yeah. closer. I think it's just a holdover from the syrup, or just maybe um, sugar cookies. Cl- again, cl- again, closer. If you, it's so the devil It's a sweetness. The there's cinnamon sweetness. flavor that's coming yeah. through is right. So it's it's Snickerdoodle. Okay, I love Snickerdoodle. I don't think I've ever had it. You never had a Snickerdoodle. You've had a Snickerdoodle. I don't Stop it! Are you kidding me? My Stop. family doesn't make it for any holidays. Like that's not a. But treat like out in the wild, yeah. Like there's, there's no, there's no way you haven't had a Snickerdoodle. Like by a cookie accident. company. I, I don't think that I have. You love a Snickerdoodle. Grabbing, you go, you grab treats willy nilly at parties. There's no way you haven't accidentally had a Snickerdoodle. I don't, I, first of all, I don't grab Snicks. Snicks. <laughs> <laughs> I don't snacks. grab Snicks. <laughs> I don't grab Snicks willy nilly. <laughs> I don't grab snacks willy nilly. That's not true. I've seen you grab so many snacks. Uh, yeah. <sighs> Lies and slander. Uh, Snickerdoodles are great. That's the most important time of year where we're supposed to support one another. Mm -hmm. Lies and slander from Nate and Brad Wow. 
Anyway, Snickerdoodle Almonds those from are good. Blue Diamond. Where'd you get those? Uh, I got them at Walmart, I think. I might get some. Yeah, be on the lookout. They also have uh, peppermint, actually, as well. Oh, no, I got these at Walgreens. Walgreens. Check I got to make something uh, to bring to my family Christmas Eve Just party. bring a can of nuts. I think I'm going to. There you go. People love them. Tell them you made homemade snickerdoodle made almonds. Homemade blue Do you guys have to bring nuts. something to your Christmas, your family Christmas? Night? I just bring a sense of wonder. <laughs> uh, Merriment. Whimsy. They, they know better. They don't want to try anything I've tried to make. We're usually the ones who are having Christmas in my house, so I'm, I usually make a couple dips, like buffalo chicken dip or taco dip. Oh, nice. They're a big hit. I bring a jaunty tail. Disappointment. <laughs> 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 That's what you get. Uh, so there you go, Blue Diamond and Goldfish Snacks. Get them while you can. Limited edition in stores now. Enjoy. All right. All right. Well, that's the show. Thanks for listening. <laughs> Merry Christmas to all and to all a good night. Uh, Nate, what's the last movie you saw, buddy? Uh, I haven't watched. Did you watch your I, assigned movie from your good buddy, Ben, who gave you the movie Looper? No. Okay. Are you fucking serious? Uh, okay. It's the last episode of the year and you couldn't deliver? No. What are you, anti Santa? Or Santa Anna? No. <laughs> what? <laughs> I don't I don't even know what Looper is about. I didn't even look it up. He didn't even look wow. it up. Wow. Um, you gotta be what have you been doing? Uh why I, is this I, later? It's like the one time a year I work. You're not Santa Claus and it's not Christmas yet. Okay. Um <laughs> so I watched a movie yeah, by, by the way. People, I watched people a movie. Wait a minute, hold on. He's about to talk about another movie he watched instead. But here's the thing. Written and also, directed by Ryan Johnson. Hold on. Um, also, you said... Hey, oh, wait, stars- oh, oh, wait, hold on. He's about to talk about Bruce Bruce Willis. Willis. He's looking it up. He's Joseph gordon oh, and Emily Blunt. She's great. Emily Blunt is great. In in, in how, how did you like her in Looper? <laughs> She's great. That's what I'm saying. And, uh, Who does she play? Uh, she, she plays um, <laughs> Sarah... <laughs> And what does Sarah do in this movie? Uh, He's going to ruin the yeah, whole movie. Yeah, stop looking it up. Jesus. Uh, come uh, on, Nate. No, no, this was great. I, I really loved it. He's um, going to ruin the whole movie for me. Stop reading. You know who else is in this? Jeff Daniels. I, and I really loved his parts in here. What did he do? He acted. <laughs> Son of a bitch. You're reading the goddamn wiki. All right, so Nate, what did you watch instead of the movie you were Not a lot, to? honestly. I didn't. Uh, Gosh, well, there was wiki. more than one? I didn't watch a lot is what I'm so saying. So what did you watch? Uh, I'm trying to see if I did watch anything. Um, what the fuck, man? I'm also, it's not, listen, it's, again, it's not like they start having church on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. Just okay, like I got a lot of stuff going on right now, all it's, right? It's, it's Monday, Tuesday, oh, Wednesday. It's, uh, that's not even that good of a joke because yeah, it it's is. not even Lent. Um, <laughs> also, if they if they if if the same people are coming, then they're going to hear, hear the same sermon. Just do the same sermon over and over again. That's, that's not how this works. If, it, if they're coming, if the Monday- Do we do the same podcast every week? No, we don't. If we did it Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, you damn right we would. I mean, no, Ben does the same trailer song. It is true. <laughs> You're, you know what? You're getting the same fucking trailer song today. It's gonna be. It's gonna be the most ro- rote, like derivative song I've ever. Yeah. Said. What else is new? Oh, <laughs> keep in. Keep I in. Did, I did want to go see Wonka, um, but I didn't. Uh, <laughs> cool, cool story, Nate. So that's all I got. Here's a list of the movies. Here's a list of the movies I kind of wanted to see. I wanted to but see this. this. So it's uh, not you. I, oh, I did. I did watch a movie. Uh, but I can't remember what it's called. Oh, oh my, my God. God. Jesus. Are you uh, what's, serious? Uh, John David Washington's in a film that came out recently. Sure. The Creator? Yeah, that's the one. Oh, okay. I watched that one. And how was it? It was good. Do you just have the actually, no, let me, let me, let me, no, I actually did watch this one. Let me let me tell you about this one. Um, because I was very excited about the trailer for this, if you mm-hmm. remember right. I was very excited about it. I liked that they were creating a world. Um not a lot of movies do that these days. Like a like a new world that isn't Star Wars or you know some kind of fantasy sure. thing that we've seen. Um, I thought there was I I liked the kid actor in mm-hmm. this. She was she was very good, um, but I I didn't think it I didn't think it followed all the way through very well. Yeah. Like there was some parts there that that just didn't fit well. For those that maybe don't recall, the creator. Uh, is set in the future where AI has kind of taken over and resulted in a war where people are trying to stop it from existing. Um, and there's this like inherent bias, uh, kind of like a naturally, s- it's anti AI. Yeah, exactly. Against re- Brad made people it. who are uh, half like robot and stuff like that. And you know, what do you have against kids? I don't know, it's something about their faces. But <laughs> but I, 
I really, really wanted to like this film, so I think it was still okay. I just, it is. It was disappointing to me, so I don't. I didn't like it as much, right? So yeah. like, I had really high expectations for this film, and I wanted them to create a world and maybe even revisit the world and like you know actually build something of a franchise in this film. And I, don't I didn't think necessarily. It's that. I don't think it's that. Yeah, I didn't necessarily need, need a franchise necessarily, and I do, I do think the world building is is solid, um, but it, it doesn't feel like it digs deep enough, especially with how often they've done similar stories yeah, about, yep. you know, robots and AI and apocalypse and, and that kind of thing. Um, but uh, the one thing that I think that is incredible about this movie is the seamless blend of visual effects with practical locations where it's very hard to tell like what is real and like what is not. And like just, just how well industrial light and magic put yeah. computer generated effects into real world locations. I felt about this movie kind of similar to the, that I did with Adam driver 65. If you mm-hmm. remember, like they're fine and they're the lead actors are very good. Right. Um, so the problem isn't the acting. It just didn't feel complete to me. Yeah. Um, I don't so. disagree, but I, I still enjoyed it. Definitely. Yep. I, I would, I would watch it again. Like yeah. if, if somebody wanted to watch it, but, but um, just not as good as I. That the only thing you watched? Um, Do you watch any Christmas stuff? Uh, I watched this Wonderful Life again. Jesus, you did. have you seen that? That's really Why? good. What are you doing? Have you seen, Ben? You haven't seen it. I'm mean, seen it. Um, but you 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 said that you have seen this since the last time we recorded. Uh, no, two times ago that when I recorded. Yes, okay. I watched wow. it again. I he said it. again. So, um, huh? Uh, uh, actually I? asked, do you like crying? Hey Ben, do I like crying? <laughs> uh, yes, so much so that he uh, assigns movies that other people will maybe he'll try to get them to cry too, or at uh, least be depressed. Hey Ben, did you get depressed the last movie I watched? Are you watched that I recommended? Uh, yes, <laughs> yes I did. That makes sense. Uh, I t- try to give uh, Brad dead dad movies. Um, ben, just any movie that'll make him feel. Yeah. Um, or anything cringeworthy. Family Stone is not cringeworthy. It is not. We discovered that Brad is is not cringeworthy, is it? No, we had we had a whole conversation. I mean, I mean, there there are aspects of it that are cringeworthy. That's fine. That, yep. That's the point, though. And like Ben's problem is that oh, it didn't feel real to me. Uh, family, uh, family Stone, ben, do this. Ben. Oh. Hi, everybody. Welcome to the the podcast. Oh, dumped in my pants again. <laughs> you remember when Ben said that? Yeah, I remember when he did it. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I remember when he did it. I'm Nate Lokes. <laughs> That's not me. Yeah. I remember we did it's it. A, that's not even close. Yeah, jeez. No. Yeah. Sounds a lot you more handsome embarrassed. than that. <laughs> <laughs> I remember when he did it. Um, there ben, you go. Now ben, we're talking. Did you watch any movies? I did, man. Thanks for asking. Yeah. What did you watch? Well, I watched The Family Stone. <laughs> no, you didn't. <laughs> Again. 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 <laughs> uh, I, uh, I watched Die Hard. Did you watch it with a vengeance? Yes, I watched the original <laughs> Die Hard, but I had a real stick up my ass about yeah. it. <laughs> Ooh, I, want to <laughs> I hate watch this motherfucker. <laughs> uh, How did it hold up? I mean, I love that movie so much. It just it, it's beyond. Does it hold up for me? Like, of course, the reality of the situation is that the the the, the, the he's smoking in an airport and there's a pl- gun on the plane, and so yes, these days maybe that doesn't fly as well. But Literally, those are those are the good old days. those are the good old days. But man, oh man, you can't tell me. When the the uh, just there's just so much about that movie that is all time classic that just all other movies that came after you know it's Die Hard on a bus is speed it's Die Hard on a plane it's a, they they obviously had something really original when they did that um, and Bruce Willis's perfect mix of wisecracking but not being over the top with it and believable you know uh, even though he's running on glass and kind of you know is indestructible it still felt like he was really getting hurt yeah and that was tough because like you watch the rock now and, and he gets he gets thrown through a plate glass window and nothing happens right but at least back then you got cut hey i've never looked- at least back then you got cut <laughs> i've never taken the time to look this up but i've always noticed it when i've watched it uh is there any explanation out there as for the drastic change in the color of the the tank top that he's wearing because obviously it gets dirty because it's, it's white but there's a point in the movie where it looks like it's a completely different color like it's like literally gray yeah or, or, or even like an olive green and i don't know that other than like they, they definitely went through the stages of he's crawling through the vents getting dirty and then but then of course it and it's bloody dirty nasty yeah but it, but it feels like after you see it in that state it goes back to being a little bit whiter again. and i'm pretty sure that's just Continuity cuts. I just yeah, I just wondered if there was a. It point was nineteen eighty seven. When, when like, yeah, when it, like so. he changed or something or that yeah, just yeah. it was it was strange. Yeah, no, they, I don't think the, other than like just the fact that they had multiple wardrobes. Okay, fair enough. 
Yeah, uh, and then I, I did I didn't watch too much other uh, stuff, but I did watch my my assigned film. Oh, and what was it? It was the Ides of March. Oh, given to me my my good friend Brad, who I respect enough to actually watch the film Assigned. Thank you, Ben. Uh, it stars Ryan Gosling. Nate, are you listening? What? Yeah, that's, that's what I'm. It stars Ryan Gosling and George Clooney and Philip Seymour Hoffman and Paul Giamatti. Who's the best actor of those four? Go. Ooh. Yeah. Ooh, probably George Clooney by far. No. Wow. By far? Uh, I'm no, he's just, joking. I'm joking. I'm joking. I'm jo- just joking. It's a tight race between... Philip Seymour Hoffman is the best actor in that in, in, of, in that film. Th- they are very good together. I think Paul Giamatti in that film is my favorite actor. He has less screen time. Than Philip Seymour Hoffman does, but I, I think I think I like Paul Giamatti's acting better in that film. However, overall as an actor, body of work wise, Philip Seymour Hoffman is definitely the A there. Yeah, and I think uh, he's got the most eclectic. Paul Giamatti's career. the B. Uh, uh, I think that Ryan Gosling's the C, and then, then George Clooney's the D there. Yeah, you just don't like George Clooney. I love George Clooney, but I think that honestly, there's I would not never, a lot of versatility. To yeah, George but not, I would also no. never say that Ryan Gosling like. You know, five even five years ago would have fit that bill, but after the Nice Guys came out, it really changed the way I looked at him. Is George Clooney a better director than he is an actor? Mm, depends on the no. movie, but yeah, but no. leaning more towards no. Okay. I think I think Clooney has more hits as an actor than he does as director. So, and even though he's, it's a little one note. The note's pretty damn good. Yeah, you know. Mm-hmm. Uh, but in this, he plays a presidential ca- or a presidential. Uh, excuse me, he plays a presidential candidate. Um, Ryan Gosling and uh, uh, Philip Seymour Hoffman are members of his staff. Uh, Paul Giamatti plays a member of the opposing uh, side's staff, and it's a it's it it's what starts off as a bitter race for the Democratic National Convention representative to uh, uh, run against the Republican for the the seat of President of the United States. Turns into more of a uh, loyalty. Uh, burn down the house that you were in was th- not really thriller, but like there's an a definitely more edge to it. Um, I don't want to spoil it honestly. Like I want people to see this movie, and and the, you can spoil it pretty well if you get into the kind of the details on the second it's half from, of the film. It's from twelve years ago, though. I mean, I think if you haven't seen it by now, I just don't think a lot of people have seen this. See I don't it. know that a lot of people have seen this film. I mean, it got nominated for best picture. Did it really? Was, yeah. Didn't it? Am I from remembering? I don't think so. <laughs> no, I could tell you exactly. Uh, I was actually just looking this up. Uh, his war- awards, and he has won two awards. Who's he? Uh, George Clooney. George Sorry, directed because he directed this. He's won, uh, or he got nominated for best director for Good Night and Good Luck, and that's it. That's the only direct- uh, direction that he's won or got nominated for. He best supporting actor. He won for Syriana, um, and he won for Argo. Gotcha. What, what was his role in Argo? He played Argo, Ben Argo. He produced it. I forget what his role in Argo was actually. It's, it's oh, not- he was in it, and he just produced it. Mm-hmm. Oh, I thought you said he was in it. He won. No, he won for it. But oh yeah, he, he was. Just, oh yeah, he was just a he producer. He was a producer. Yeah. So that's his second uh, Academy Award. But yeah, no, I, it's a it's a very good political uh, movie. And I will say the Ides of March did win uh, or did get nominated for Golden Globes, but that's like the oh, there we go. Yeah, that is Meyer brand, brand version yeah. of the Academy Award. And that's being kind because, <laughs> you know, Meyer isn't a piece of shit organization. Wow. That's just trying to fuck stars. Is Go- that, Whoa. I, is, is, there the some, is there some stuff going on with the Golden Globes? That, did, did they hurt you? I mean, they've hurt a lot of people because they're just trash. The, I mean, it's, it's an award show. How is it trash? <laughs> I don't get this. That's an oxymoron. Mm-hmm. That's nothing to do with getting rid of acne. Wow. <laughs> so yeah, Ides of March. Check what it out. Did you did you enjoy it though? I did. No, I really did. I'm glad. Yeah. Why did you decide to give me that one? Uh I just, did you saw- just scroll through the list and be like, yeah, fuck it. No, I was scrolling <laughs> through the list and like I, I couldn't find any good Christmas movie that I felt like excited about about giving you, even though there's plenty you haven't seen. Uh and that I, I really like the Ides of March a lot. It's um George Clooney hasn't you directed You love Philip Seymour Hoffman. I mean I do. Uh, it's, uh, but George Clooney hasn't directed a lot of Did you guys know he died? <laughs> fuck uh george Clooney hasn't directed a lot of like movies that are absolutely great but this um and good night and good luck are two favorites of mine no i will say watching the whole time i was engaged with it the entire time i never i never felt like i wanted to check my phone i never felt like pausing it at at, at any moment like it it keeps your attention the entire time yeah it's fantastic do you like this better than good night and good luck no good night and good luck is like an all-time favorite for me so i i love that movie 
There you go. So that, those are the two that I. That's seen. it. It was a it was a busy week. It, That's all. It's the holidays, all right. Brad, what about you? Oh, hoop de hoop. <laughs> and snickety <you> don't <laughs> flippity flop. Uh, flippity flop. You, I have, you didn't watch anything, did you? No, I watched. <laughs> <laughs> no, I've, I saw I saw some things because I had to do some some catch up uh, as we got our year end stuff together for slash film. So I I watched some things. I watched. Wait, I did talk about Dead Reckoning Part One, right? No, yes, on the last yeah, okay. episode. Just yeah, yeah. Okay. All right, so what did you watch that will impress us? Go ahead. Oh, gosh. Uh, I saw the, the new Star Wars movie. It's not even out yet, <laughs> but I saw it. It's not even talked about yet. Yeah, no, one's even, no one even knows what the title is, but I saw all the footage. Han Duo. And it's Speaking of, Adam, Adam Driver has been on like the interview circuit right now with podcasts, podcasts that I listen to, and I am really excited about Ferrari. Did you see that yet? No, uh, but I've only heard mixed things, so I'm not super excited about it. But he's very excited, and I like Adam Driver a lot. I think Adam Driver is excited about a lot of things that he's in. <laughs> Actually, he says he's not <laughs> in the podcast. He's like, uh, I'm just really pushing this because I actually believe in this film, but it's not that great. I, I've only heard mixed things from people who have seen okay. it. I haven't heard anybody like ranting and raving about it, like, oh my God, you got to see Ferrari. Okay. No one talks like that. No one talks like that at all. Like, oh my God, you got to see Ferrari. Yeah. Uh, he goes, <laughs> <laughs> That's how the car sounds. <laughs> uh, no, I, so I, I watched a movie uh, that is called All of Us Strangers. Uh, which stars uh, Andrew Scott from Fleabag. Is that a show that you ever watched, Nate? Yeah. Uh, he plays the sexy priest in that show. Yeah. And, the sexy priest. Uh, he really does. And so he's in this, uh, and it's Paul Mescal is the other actor. Um, and so this is kind of getting some awards buzz. And I think didn't Paul Mescal date... Phoebe Bridger? You're asking the wrong person, buddy. Yeah, this is Andy Music. You don't, you don't know him. Who's Andy Music? <laughs> Uh, so, uh, yeah, so this is a, uh, a movie that is, it's getting a lot of awards buzz, uh, right now, and it's, um, it's directed by Andrew Hay, and it also stars Jamie Bell, uh, and Claire Foy, and this movie is, it's, it's kind of a, a trip, because it follows, uh, Andrew Scott as this guy who's kind of a little bit, like, lonely, he's living in this, like, high-rise apartment, and there's not a lot of people uh, in this apartment complex for some reason and he's having trouble writing uh, a screenplay you know kind of like struggling and uh, for some inspiration he decides to go visit his childhood home uh, and while there he sees sees his parents uh, who are played by Jamie Bell and Claire Foy uh, and they seem rather young uh, for I was gonna say how does that work because Jamie Bell's like his age yeah right? so they and it's for the scenario but so he meets them and they you know hang out and that kind of thing and it's been a while since he's been home and they're excited to see him Goes back to his apartment, uh, and then uh, as after he meets Paul Mescal and has this conversation with him, uh, you find out that his parents uh, died like thirty years previously. Hey Ben, my mom died. Always with the dead mom stuff. I don't know if you knew that Ben. And his dad died. Yeah, they're together. I'm the only one that still has two yeah, living parents know, on yeah. the podcast. <laughs> yeah. I hey. get it, and you guys should have done better. We just wanted you to know. So. Uh, he, um, he's, I saw, I got, I got both lungs too, Nate. <laughs> gotcha. <laughs> <laughs> so he continues, uh, to go see his parents and talk to them. Like he doesn't, it's, there's no real like explanation as to like why this is happening or, or anything like that. So like, is it one of those films where you have to like start filling in the gaps? It's only giving you little piece. It's like a puzzle piece movie. It's not a puzzle piece movie, but like it just, you, you figure things out as, the, as as it goes on. Cause like at first you're wondering what, why, what, unless you read the synopsis for the movie, you're wondering, Oh, why are his parents so young? What's, okay. what's going on here? And then you realize like, it's this thing where he's, whatever's happening, he's talking to his parents and they're, they're basically like, seeing what he's like as a grown man so they have all these conversations where he's filling in gaps for them about his life and who he is and includes things like they didn't weren't aware that he's he's gay and so he has this conversation with his mom as an older brett, man brett is this kind of like at the end of silent night when the protagonist is is on his uh maybe his deathbed we won't say if he dies or not but he's looking back through <laughs> and, and normally when you're thinking you're dying your life flashes before your eyes. But in this film, they decided, let's make the child's life flash, <laughs> the dead child that you're uh, avenging. Let's make that flash through. And so we see things that haven't ever happened, where the young child who died at four years old is graduating high school. It's, is it's, it kind of like that? It's an interesting comparison, <laughs> uh, but no. Because it's 
so it's fucking a, weird. And interesting. Can yeah. we just say that that was so fucking it weird? Was. Uh, but yeah. So, the, but this is um, for me. This is a really interesting movie because I uh, I wasn't sure what to expect from it. I kind of went in knowing as little as possible, and it's this interesting mix of Eternal Sunshine of the Spotless Mind in a way, at least that's as far as the style of sci-fi. Because it, oh, it, that's a high compliment from you. Yeah, and then also about time because of like the time aspect and like what just kind of like being an older man and being able to go back and have conversations with your parents as they were as you remember them when they were younger and when you, you think, were younger do you think you would have hung out with your parents i don't know in your friend group like if they're like you're you're how old are you 38 37 so do you think you would have hung out with your parents at 37 would oh, yeah, you, do you think been they would have been your friend type group? of people I think probably in college, like from the stories I've heard from my parents, like as far as like them having parties at my like my dad's fraternity and stuff like that. How about you, Nate? Would you in, in your early twenties, your your father in his early twenties, would you guys have hung out? That's a very real no. <laughs> <laughs> what about you? I actually think I think my parents changed. I think they got They're so much more fun now. I no, the reverse. I think that back then they were very free spirited. And I think it, I think Laporte Seamless Cutter changed them, where they're like, "This is hard, and life should be hard." <laughs> Would you say that hard. owning that company makes everyone a worse person? Yes. Damn. <laughs> yeah. Maybe not. A, maybe not a worse person, but definitely you take it a lot, a lot more serious for sure. <laughs> yeah. uh, my dad used to take off and randomly go skiing. Like he told me a story, and we can cut all this. But he told me a story about when he was like nineteen. He just got in his car with his buddy, and they drove to Colorado with like barely a map, just to go skiing. And they got all the way to this resort, but the road was closed, so they just turned around and came back. <laughs> like that's the kind of dumb shit I would do. That my dad, like, you didn't have a map. What are you <laughs> doing with your life? This is why your mother and I can't stay. But he did that kind of shit. He used to fucking go wreck diving in Lake Michigan with a guy, and like find crazy shit underneath the water my dad's big thing is, is if i would say well i just thought i was gonna and he'd stop me and say no son the problem is, is you weren't thinking that's his big deal yeah uh, you, you know i'd say well if i just had more time or if i just had a, a better car and my dad would say you know if a, if a frog had a glass ass it would only hop once ah, yes, ah I think of course one. yes and you have that uh, just burned into your skin. Now. Just tattooed on my lower back <laughs> for all to see uh so but yeah so so this movie uh it's uh, it really is beautiful, and like uh, there is a, there is an aspect of it too that I think appealed to me more because of thinking about uh, my my dad, you know, since, because he, he has passed away, and it's one it's one of those things where after my dad died and I rewatched Back to the Future, I saw Back to the Future in like such a new light because I I was thinking about it in a way of be like, oh man, how fucking cool like would it be to be able to go back in time and like hang out with my dad when he was, you know, like in high school or college or something like that. And so this kind of like, it tapped into a different thing. And like, it's uh, it's not exactly the same, but thinking about like what it would be like to be a grown man whose parents died when they were like 10 years old and to be able to like have that experience of having them see what you are like as a grown man is like, it's, 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 it's why it was wild. And it really just like, just like tugged at my heartstrings. Um, but yeah, I, I really liked it a lot. So if you get a chance to see it, uh, all of us strangers, it's, it's very, very good. I would just go back to the, the, when I was like my, my, my uncle Jerry and my dad at like 22, like, yeah, look at the tits on that. Oh, great. Awesome. This is a lot of fun. Thanks dad and uncle Jerry. <laughs> um, I also watched uh, a movie called anatomy of a fall, which is another movie that has been getting some awards attention as well. Like Golden Globes awards <laughs> attention? No, like real awards attention. Because no, we've like, never heard of any of these movies. Yeah, we're well, talking are, about like a, like a circle jerk from these are ones the Hollywood that like Forum Dance on the Sun or whatever. <laughs> yeah. I love Dance on the Sun. How did you see it? Mm-hmm. No? You didn't? This is a French courtroom drama thriller? It is. Oh, so pass. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's actually... Wait, did you have to read, did you have to read this movie? Uh, partially. There's a good chunk of it that is in English. Yeah, Ben and I are a hard pass. Nay, you love reading. I do love reading. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, this is a uh, it's a courtroom courtroom drama, and basically uh, the the premise is that it's about a uh, the legal drama that unfolds after a woman's husband is found dead outside of a house that they're renovating. It appears as if he fell from the like uh, top story um, room that he was fixing up uh, and hit his head on the way down and is dead. But after it's examined by the police. They believe that uh, he could have been struck by something before he fell, and it wasn't actually uh, hitting anything on the way down that killed him. And he so was murdered. It's this. It's there. There's a bit of intrigue about it, but really, what it just comes down to is kind of like basically putting 
uh, a marriage on trial. And there's a little bit of Gone Girl to it without the the sensationalist satire that comes from David Fincher in that movie. Because I, I love Gone Girl. This is a little bit more grounded. But the way it approaches the idea of how like a uh, an entire relationship is portrayed to the public and like wh- what the media sees and what the courtroom sees and how you like explain to somebody like how you argue with your significant other and like you know th- how how dramatic things can get and what it means when you say certain things and trying to make it so that like people understand like you know you no know, of course you why would you want to kill your husband or something like that no i only said i'm gonna kill you you <laughs> stupid bitch. um but it's 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 a very compelling very very well acted uh drama and i i i did really like it, it didn't end up being like one of my favorites of the year or anything like that but it was uh it's, it's very good uh and then uh i also watched may december which is uh oh yes this is the uh Nate's excited no i've been, I've been hearing a lot film? about this no 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 it's about does, the, oh, wait, does it make you sad uh mary Kay letourneau did right? you cry her story yeah yeah which this this fast wait wait scene. okay <laughs> you're ex- okay all right you know what go, go on no nate. go on nate so yeah, christmas movies and movies i about remember watching about child mary, predators. mary Kay letourneau when uh, uh like my mom was still watching oprah she was oh, wait, i mean it was, she it was, was a alive huge then. story back yeah then. and so I'm, I'm really fascinated by this and i've heard it's very good did you like it uh for the most part yes it's uh, it's a little bit strange because of how director todd haynes chose to tell the story um, and so if you, if you don't know, this movie stars uh, Natalie Portman and Julianne Moore, uh, and Natalie Portman it plays an actress who is coming to visit Julianne Moore because she's going to star in a movie that is telling her life story, and Julianne Moore is playing a woman uh, who got impregnated by a seventh grade boy. By, she's the Mary Kay Letourneau, right? Yeah, and have had an inappropriate relationship with this kid, uh, and they had the child. They're now married. They have kids. They have a family. So and this is not a bit. Uh, back up a little bit. This is, but this is the story of the actual Mary Le- Kay Letourneau. No, no, it's, no, it's not. It's not meant to be. But it's. But it's. Sorry, sorry. I'm yeah. so sorry. I thought this was like a, a, a no, biopic or whatever. No, no, no. No, okay. but th- there, there, there are s- very similar bio. Stuff. There are oh, okay. scenes sorry, that are sorry. directly taken though gotcha. from so this their story. Though. So right. that's that's the situation that the movie is. Yeah. Okay. I'm sorry. Uh, and so you basically watch Natalie Portman as she learns who Julianne Moore's character is, how that relationship came about, trying to figure out her and like craft her performance and that kind of thing. Uh, but it is presented as a melodrama, which can be a bit jarring if you're not anticipating it. Um, the, equally strange is some people might see this movie uh, and think that it's supposed to be a comedy because it did get an award in the comedy category at the Golden Globes, which again, Golden Globes are bullshit. Uh, and some of, didn't the Martian win a Golden Globe for yeah, some, comedy? And, and some of it is how the Golden Globes allow studios to define what their movie is categorized as which is really stupid but having said that there are moments in the movie that are funny and the way it's played is you could easily conceive of it as being a comedy in that way especially because the way the score in this movie is structured is it's intentionally very over the top like very moody piano in certain parts and it 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 plays it up for melodrama but it's meant it's still meant to be dramatic but it's not played in like the most uh, like emotionally charged, deadly serious, dramatic fashion, and that's something that I think a lot of people aren't used to. And I'm, I'm not fully, you know, used to that. And so, like, even even understanding that, it still feels odd to me. Every day. like every now and then, I'm like, that's that's really weird. Like that you chose to put the in, in there. Uh, so, but the uh, Natalie Portman and Julianne Moore are great in it. Um, I just don't know if I really like the style of how the story is presented. Also, Charlie Melton, who plays the the boy who is now a grown man and is like you know in the relationship with Julianne Moore, is fantastic in this movie too. Did they do? A, do you think that they did a decent job? All right, I don't know how much of the movie is focused on this, but the actress going to prepare for a role with the real person it's based on for sure did and they do a good job of like how that probably really does work in the, the in the movie industry i mean to an extent like i don't i don't necessarily know the ins and outs well, sure. about you know how a lot, a, a, every actor does it differently but like there is an aspect that part to was it. believable though yeah absolutely believable and, and and it adds kind of a layer of um i don't know like, does, it, does it give like oh well i that i would know i would tell this person this because she's my understudy in this moment that they like it builds that layer of trust that you don't have to earn yeah but she's but julianne moore's character is also very apprehensive about how she's going to be portrayed okay and, and so she is maybe like it's more reserved and so natalie portman's character does have to draw it out of her a little bit more uh yeah in some ways but it's it's also just like it, it, it's a struggle really to like get a get a good picture of like who she really is and like trying to see if there is this like 
I don't know, uh, unsavory or like, like, you know, side that no one has seen, like trying to find like maybe the skeletons in the closet there. But this, what, what, what makes the, the story itself so compelling is that this is a woman who doesn't seem like a flat out villain. Like the way you often see people who have groomed children or like are child abuse and stuff like that. It's like a lovely bones kind of like, mm-hmm. Oh, he's the, that's a creepy guy or that's, you know, that's a creepy woman. She's a very normal, normal. Yeah. And so like the fact that like she was able to get away with what she did and like, Hey, most of us are normal, Brad. You know, we're complicated <laughs> characters in the tapestry of life. But yeah, it's uh so it's, I, I liked the story. I liked the performances. It's the, the presentation a little bit. I'm not necessarily sure why they went for the, the melodrama uh, route, but yeah, I mean, so it's, it's on Netflix if you want to watch it. If you I'm like, okay. There you go. Nate, what, what movies have you seen, buddy? Oh, wait, none. I got one more because uh, my, my friend Nate assigned me a movie. Yeah. And I respect Nate, so I watch the movies that he assigned me. Nate, uh, here, I got a quick question for Nate. Do you remember, without looking at anything, what movie you gave Brad? Not at all, actually. I don't remember. Oh, wow. My God. Oh, wow. He doesn't even care. Didn't even care. watch his own and okay. can't remember right. what you L- gave Brad. inside baseball. How many times do I got ask you guys, after you assign me a movie, what movie did you assign me? Never, and then you don't watch it. No, I ask you at least... <laughs> Two or three times a time. Hey, guys, I don't remember. What did you assign me again? You're like, oh, come on. I don't remember things. I know. It's okay. It's fine. It's it's whatever. All right. Well, we still love you, I guess. It's You're going to do the trailer song, so it's great. Uh, Nate assigned me Cars 2. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I love it. They go so fast. <laughs> they go so fast. That should be the tagline. Cars, Cars 2. They, they go, go so, so fast. fast. Uh, so, no, Nate assigned me uh, the happiest season. Yeah. So doop dee doop. A dickery doop. Uh, so no, so it's uh, the happiest season. This is uh, a a movie that's available on Hulu. It came out in 2020. Because uh, you you had assigned me, I think, a Kristen Stewart film, right? I did. And you it, do it, remember that? Good. And yeah. it was technically a Christmas movie because it does take mm-hmm. place at Christmas. I assigned you Spencer, and so you decided to give me a Kristen Stewart movie that takes place at Christmas. Mm-hmm. And I'm not upset about it because it was actually a very good. I movie. I enjoyed this one too. Yeah. Um, uh, what, did you see this when it came out? Nate, or did you? See I did. Yeah, recently? I did. I saw it. I haven't seen. I haven't watched it this year yet. I had completely forgotten this movie existed until you assigned it to me i was like oh i never got around to watching this uh so what's cool about this i didn't realize this is this is directed by uh clea duvall do you know who clea duvall is nate i i don't like i i've heard the name but i don't know what she's done so she shelly duvall's mom <laughs> uh she would actually have to be shelly duvall's uh daughter because she's younger. yeah exactly or well, granddaughter no. yeah like, but she not no no she doesn't she plays the uh the sketchy kind of goth girl in the faculty if you remember that oh, movie oh yeah remember the Faculty? oh yeah john yeah. stewart Yep, John Stewart's the most famous person in that movie. <laughs> he is, He's by far. Not. Who else is in the faculty? Josh Hartnett, Famke Janssen. Who? Famke. John Stewart is by... Back then, he was the most famous person. Not at that time. He, he was huge. No, he still wasn't. <laughs> uh, but you think John Stewart's the most famous person in Death to Smoochie, too, huh? Well, alive? Fair. <laughs> <laughs> uh, anyway, uh, so Clay Duvall uh, wrote and directed this, and it stars Kristen Stewart and Mackenzie Davis. Uh, they play a lesbian couple where Mackenzie Davis invites uh, Kristen Stewart back to her family's house for Christmas uh, because Kristen Stewart's parents are dead. That's why Nate loves it. Um, <laughs> and, and so, but uh, it's true. It's you're, not, you're, so, not lying. you're so sad. I want to hug you right now. But then Mackenzie Davis starts to regret it because she hasn't yet come out to her parents and told them that Kristen Stewart is her significant other and her father Victor Garber uh is I like Victor Garber is in He's the nice is in the running for uh for a, a political uh seat and so Alison Brie's in this too yes Alison Brie is and I was going to get to that and yeah, I, thank you cute. very much for interrupting my I just wanted you to know that. Uh, but they uh so basically they they go and they spend Oh that I had to look up Victor Garber Oh. Well, he, he's a fun he's character. A nice guy. He's a great character. So they go, they go to uh, Mackenzie Davis's family and spend Christmas there. And the family dynamic is it's a little bit uh, stilted because they're they're all obviously trying to like. Uh, you know, be good for Victor Carver's reputation and that kind of thing. Very waspy. Yeah, right? absolutely very waspy. And uh, it's what I really like about this movie is that it has the the makings of what could have been an over the top holiday comedy with mm-hmm. all with all the the family silliness and and rigmarole but it's subdued with a like in a an indie movie sandwich basically but it still feels christmasy it does uh and it's still very funny without going over the top without doing the like you know crazy wild antics that you see in stuff like christmas with the cranks and deck the halls and all that bullshit um but it is it's it's very enjoyable and man allison Bree, she plays an ice queen yeah in this movie she is just just really just being a wench uh, i think i'll go out on a limb here allison Bree, pretty attractive 
And I'm probably the only one that thinks it's it. A bold, okay. It's a bold statement. Bold claim. Yeah. Uh, but this, I really Mary do. Holland has some funny scenes in there. She's the third sister. Oh, yeah. She is, she is very funny. I like her whenever she pops mm-hmm. up and stuff. Um, but yeah, it's it's uh, it's funny. It's it's charming. Dan Levy is in it, and he's also a delight. Is is this Amazon Prime or Hulu? I forget. It is on Hulu. Yeah. Hulu. Hulu. Doppelganger, Dan Levy. I wish that Nate had the eyebrows of Dan Levy. I wish I did, too. I do have to get my eyebrows uh, trimmed every time I go to the barber, though. He's like those do those things are getting a little off, you, you, a little you, off hand, buddy. You, you're a little wild. A little out of hand. It did. is amazing how much Dan Levy's eyebrows are Eugene Levy's eyebrows. Yeah, no, he inherited those. Yeah, those, those are some big puffy caterpillars. Hereditary <laughs> eyebrows <laughs> for real. It's, they are. it's wild. Yeah, that's funny. So, uh, but yeah, I, I did. I like this movie a lot. I'm glad I watched it. I'm glad you assigned it to me. I'm glad you watched it. Very charming. Very enjoyable. Uh, I give you good movies to watch. You do. Ben gave you a good movie, and you just uh, <laughs> shed on it. <laughs> And then tried to spoil it for yourself by reading the Wikipedia. Well, you I read. was nervous for you. Like, don't read any further, man. It's a really good I, movie. I, I don't want you to ruin it. it. Yeah, but I will. Yeah, watch and it. there's some fun twists in it too. So, like, don't ruin it. Okay. You don't ruin. <laughs> you can stop yelling at me. Yeah, you better watch it over the Christmas season. I will. Yeah, it's a Christmas movie, Nate. Yeah. So loop de loop. Hickory Hickory Hawk. It's about time travel. So. Oh boy. Uh, I guess we'll do trailers now. <laughs> Wow, it sounds real excited. <laughs> uh, clearly, Ben's at the time of the podcast where he's done. I uh, guess we'll do trailers now. <laughs> Actually, I do want. I want. To, I want to fight about one of the trailers. Papa's got to take his nighttime shit. <laughs> I don't take a nighttime shit. <laughs> yes, do you, you do. Well, yeah, you do. I really don't. You don't take a shit before you go to bed. No. <laughs> do you? Yeah. Really? Yeah. Do you uh, in the morning too? I take. I take one in the morning. Twice a day. Tw- or twice a day. Do you take? You shit once you're a day. A, yeah, you're a double dumper. I mean, here's the thing. I, I don't eat things that are great for me. <laughs> here's the thing. No, that's the thing. is Things run through me on a daily basis. Cut your calories down to nothing. You're not pooping at all anymore. That's true. Nate has lost 46 pounds. <laughs> okay, that, that makes sense. Ben, yeah. I'm concerned about you. No, it's, I've just been a daily a daily shitter my entire life. <laughs> yeah, tell me about it. <laughs> Every single day. Um, Once a day. You want to do the, the trailer It's song? an hour and a half long. Daily shitter? But yeah, you brought your friend. You brought the friend. You got to do the, the trailer song. That's not how any of Come on. Ben, do you have a trailer song for us? Of course. You piece of shit. What? what? <laughs> Jesus Christ. I told you. This is you do deserve this trailer song. Yes, go. Hey, hold on. Wait, before you do you this. You deserve this so much. This, this is your Christmas. Hey, before present. you do, I was yep. gonna say, let me remind you, th- it's Christmas. Yep. We don't have an episode before the end of the yep. year. Yep. So you put your best foot out there for our listeners. You give yep. them a I, real you song. Try. You I put, try. I yeah. want you to I put try. My best foot out there to trip them. Oh, yep. Jesus. You deserve you did this to yourself. Okay. Yeah. <clears throat> It's trailer time with Nate and Brad. It's trailer time and it's always bad. <laughs> do you know why? I do. Ben can't make songs up because he smells like poo. Uh, you know, trailers. I guess it's better than- By the way, I did like the trailer. trailer. It's better than like w- renditions of that he's done before. <laughs> yeah, and by the way, time. again, by the way- Neither one of you chuckle fucks joined in with your normal fuck ass fuckery. Well, there was no melody there for us well, to no, We don't know what the melody matter. is. That it doesn't song. matter. When Brad and I do it, we know where each other's going. Here's yeah. the, when here's you the, do it, we don't know what path you're going on in here's life. Here's the dirt bullshit of it all is that <laughs> Brad will go like, Trey, he'll get that far and it goes, you don't even know where he's going at all. You just start with the and I get fucking two sentences in and just fucking it go falling dead silence. Do 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 to trailer time. I'm dreaming of some movie trailers just like the ones I used to watch with those movies clips playing and children saying. I want to see do, do, do. that. <laughs> Next time we're at the show. <laughs> the show. But for now, we'll sit back. We'll relax on the couch. See, he's, he's and let lot. it snow. We don't know what the let song is snow, doing anymore. Let oh, it, it went to a new song. <laughs> ah, come on. It's really hard to follow when I don't know what song you're singing. Where was <laughs> Remix. <laughs> All right, we watched some trailers. You're all welcome. We're going to talk about some trailers. Um, one is fun. 
And the other one is You're wrong about. maybe fun. I don't know. It's going to uh, be great. We're, we're going to watch. The first one we'll talk about is called If. Uh, this is an upcoming fantasy family comedy uh, that is written and directed by John Krasinski. I love John Krasinski. Starring Ryan Reynolds and a cavalcade of stars as the voices of imaginary friends, including Steve Carell uh, and Emily Blunt and John Stewart. Ben, your favorite. He's also in this. Phoebe Waller Bridge. <laughs> Keep going. Matt Damon, Maya uh-huh. Rudolph, yep. Sam Rockwell, yes. Sebastian Maniscalco, 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 sorry, yep. uh, Christopher Maloney, Richard Jenkins, Aquafina, Vince Vaughn, John C. McGinley, uh, Fred Harris, <laughs> Bill Duke, uh, but <laughs> Bobby Moynihan's in this as well. I love, I love me some Bobby Moynihan, he, and he's Bobby actually not doing a voice; he's no. playing uh, uh, a in, person. In person, yeah. Uh, so anyway, but this is uh, basically a movie where. Uh, imaginary friends uh, actually exist if, that's in their, yeah that's what it stands for they exist in a, a world separate from our own uh, and something is happening to them and only this little girl can apparently help save them and uh, I I'm not high on this one like yeah, you guys you're are you're wrong it's you're wrong. great um, okay. moving on uh, I don't so my biggest gripe uh other than the fact that I don't think Steve Carell... You don't like Ryan Reynolds. <sighs> I love Ryan Reynolds. Um, I don't. First of all, I don't think Steve Carell's voice fits the imaginary friend character I don't know why you this. think that. I thought he did great. It's it's a DreamWorks problem to me. This isn't a DreamWorks movie, but like DreamWorks often has an issue where they, they cast big names for characters and their voice doesn't always fit the characters. Uh, and I, I, I hear Steve Carell's voice and it just doesn't match the way that big furry character looks to me because it doesn't sound like Steve Carell doing a voice. It just sounds like Steve Carell. Uh, so it's just odd to me, and I don't really didn't really like that. Uh, additionally, have you ever heard of Foster's Home for Imaginary yes, Friends? Of course. Mm-hmm. This is basically a poor man's version of that animated series. It's supposed to be inspired by it. Sure, but being inspired by it and just being a knockoff of it that doesn't look anywhere near as good is another thing. So I want to I want to get through because you said DreamWorks Animation isn't really good at casting voice actors. Not that they're not okay because Shrek hold on, hold Shrek on, is hold a DreamWorks on. Animation. Hold okay. on, not, not that they're not really good at it. But no, no, you 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 put it all in one category. You said. This you know what a, else is DreamWorks? This is bad casting because it's like a DreamWorks. How to Train you Your Dragon. Great, not, great voice ha- ca- acting. Not all DreamWorks movies have this problem, but there there are frequent- The Croods, great. There are frequent issues. I don't, is The Croods DreamWorks? Yeah. It is. You know okay. that Nate's looking at a yeah, list I'm of literally DreamWorks. Looking at it right now. <laughs> I would say that as one, actually. That I don't think the voices work very well. Uh, uh, I don't Croods? Really, I don't really the, really like the Croods is great. Really you just like don't the like The Croods. Nicolas Cage is the, is the patriarch of that. I will give you Trolls isn't great. Okay, um, but that's it. Anyway, but uh, that's it. I don't. I just. I'm not very excited about this. I was hoping that to like this. It sounded like a fun idea, uh, but it really just does feel like that they are like taking Foster's Home for Imaginary People and just not doing as good Wait, of a job. Imaginary people or imaginary friends. Um, okay. I, yeah, I don't know. I'm just. I'm not. I'm not high on this one. I'm. Gl- I'm glad you guys are. I guess. I, I think this it looks was, fun. This looks it looks great. fun. It looks great. It I love Ryan great. Reynolds. It, it has two great jokes in it. I will say the the marshmallow it joke is, was hilarious, and uh, it is technically a teaser trailer, though. For sure, but I I don't like most of what I see in this teaser trailer. Wow, I don't understand what wasn't to like. Yeah. though. it was fantasy. It was whimsy. It, it, it looks was... it looks like they put money behind it. There's a good budget there. Yep. the The characters and the and the CGI blend seamlessly. It's a teaser trailer, and you're you're. Getting I don't think every... it blends seamlessly. It look it blends really fucking well. Like the char- the characters. Seen teaser trailers where you're like, wow, and we we have to comment like, well, it's probably unfinished. It almost looks like finished CJ. I mean, the characters are meant to be cartoonish in a real world, so like, it's kind of hard to compare to visual effects that don't look as good when they're supposed to look realistic. I'm just saying, it looks like a finished product already. I am just, uh, I'm not fully on board. I would love to be convinced otherwise. I hope that it turns out to be better than it looks. I'm just not on board yet. Sorry. What is wrong with you? I like Foster's Home for Imaginary Friends better. It's a cartoon made yeah. for kids. What do you think this is? It's an adult movie made for adults. Ew. Do you like John, <laughs> Do you like John Krasinski films usually? I, I I love the first two, A Quiet Places, which are the only movies he's made. That's not true. What else? Did he, oh, br- uh, hi, brief interviews with hideous men. Yep. I have not seen that. And the Hollers. Oh, he did direct the Hollers. Yeah. Well, those movies are nothing like this one. So. <laughs> but did you like those or no? Uh, yeah. I what? haven't seen brief interviews with hideous men, but I, I do like the other three. So um, I think maybe you should trust him. Mm. <laughs> uh, you're wrong. No, saying you're wrong. 
I, I hope the movie is bad so that you have it, to just here's the thing though wow. anymore I just love Ryan Reynolds so much that I will watch pretty much anything he's in because I just I'll in, see it I enjoy him I'll see it no you won't you, yeah, you've already you've already said it's a terrible movie I'll see it I would I would love to be proven wrong here's the thing if I think something looks bad I would love for it to turn out that, that it's good I would much rather watch a good movie than a bad movie I would much rather be wrong then predict a movie that is bad and have it be bad. But do we have a lot of theatrical releases that are kids' movies like this that are full of whimsy? No, and, and I, 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 I'm all about that. I would love for that to happen more often. I'm just not sure that like doing a live action version of an animated series that already did it's this not concept a live very action. Well. It is. It no, is no, inspired. I, it's not. By yeah, it. I know. It's not a direct adaptation, but the concept is basically like bringing it into live action. Yeah, I never. Like I, I only found this out when I was researching the film. That's fine. So that's what I'm saying. So like this is gonna have a far wider reach than that little cartoon you just talked about. Little cartoon? Yeah. I mean it was a pretty little cartoon. They didn't make a movie out of it. Oh, Jesus. Uh I just yeah, I don't know. I was I was hoping for something more and maybe I'll be proven wrong and I would love that to happen. I don't that's know. what I was saying. Steve Carell is a pretty good voice actor, so He he is. Yeah. So trust, hey, hey, here, trust him. Here he's not doing a different voice than his own. So it's he didn't with Gru either. He what? <laughs> Just it's, it's his normal voice. He puts on a voice in the office. Oh, that, that'll be pretty impressive. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, well, the other trailer we watched uh, is is an adult movie for adults. It is an adult movie for adults. Uh, Beverly Hills Cop Axel F. Uh, maybe not the best title for this movie. Yeah, no kidding. I, I honestly would have preferred if they just called it Beverly Hills Cop Axel Forley. I mean, that would have been better than what Axel F. Is that your joke? No. <laughs> no, no. It, oh, you mean? I mean, it is my joke. I just thought you were like saying, like, really, that's what you're going with. No, no. But the, you came up with I that, did. or did you read that on Twitter? No, no, that's mine. Okay. okay. Um, but I, uh, I, I like this for the most part. I do think that, uh, and maybe I'm just not remembering. It's the, bringing all the guys back, bringing everyone back. It really is bringing everybody back. Uh, maybe I'm not remembering the Beverly Hills Cop movies as well uh, as other people might, because I've only seen them a couple times. Yeah, same. And I haven't seen them in a long time. Actually. I don't remember them being having quite as big of action set pieces as it seems in this trailer, right? Ben, you've probably seen so them I have, more than I've seen <laughs> these movies a lot. And uh, so... Our resident action film. There, uh, there are hosts. like this kind. Of, this kind of feels. Um, it's not quite as big, but it kind of feels like they put Axel Foley into Bad Boys. So yeah, that's good. This is uh, in the in the original uh, Beverly Hills Cop. Uh, the biggest action set pieces in the film uh, were him causing chaos and havoc. It wasn't necessarily him like in a helicopter, right? You know, paragliding down and to save a, a whatever, or getting a huge uh, car chase action blow up or whatever. But it was him destroying things yeah. in like a store or whatever. And so now they've obviously got more budget and and as the as the series progressed, it got bigger and bigger. I feel like they are making this an action movie first, and then they're gonna like dial in the yeah. comedy if they can. But you're right. I watch this trailer. and I'm like, there's not a lot of laughs to be had. But then again, the if you watch that, if you go back and watch the trailer for the first one, and it's it's Eddie Murphy being Eddie Murphy, and it's what audiences knew back in the '80s what he was gonna. So they knew it was gonna be funny. Right. Nowadays, Eddie Murphy doesn't necessarily equate to direct comedy because he's done so much. So back then, though, they didn't need to rely on. You know, yeah, throw Eddie Murphy in an action movie. He'll it'll just be funny. Now you don't know what you're gonna get. So I really do feel like it'll be funnier than you think. I really hope, though, what they do lean into was the best parts of Beverly Hills Cop, which was his fast talking, making other people uncomfortable, playing with social norms. That And, and yeah. you can update that for 2023 for sure. I don't think they're going to do that, what? though. I think they're going to be lazy and be like, he's going to do, uh, uh, and do the Eddie Murphy laugh as he I don't know. rappels the, down from a the, helicopter. The premise has enough built into it where he can do it, right? Joseph Gordon-Levitt's his partner um, who dated... Uh, Axel's daughter who's a public defense attorney so obviously she's defending the criminals um, it's so there, there's enough there that I think comedy could happen in the the, the whole thing uh, the first one was fish out of water and then they went from there mm -hmm. but the fish out of water was the smartest one in the room I hope that he still is the smartest one in the room and he's not down on his luck it is hard to be like why haven't you advanced and it is the same shtick as always with John McClane yeah. It's the same thing. You know, I just break too many rules where I get promoted and then I get knocked back down because I, I can't follow the rules. It's, they're the same character in that way. Uh, whereas John McClane is more wisecracking and ass kicking, Axel Foley is more schmoozy and talks his way out of things. Yeah. 
if anything, this feels more like a rush hour movie than yeah, with, with, with big too. set pieces. And I don't know that that's what I want. But again, this is the first trailer. We'll see what happens. I'm all in. I, I, I can't wait to see. Uh, I don't remember what Taggart's name is, uh, the actor. Yeah. But uh, Judge uh, uh, Reinhold. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I, I want to see the team back together. It's fun to see the, what, where they are. John Ashton. Is John Ashton. Yeah. I want to see where they are you know, literally 25, 30 years Paul later. Paul Reiser back too. I want to see it. You know. Yeah. This uh, Ashton returns to the role after 35 years from Beverly Hills Cop 2. Paul Reiser after 35 years from Beverly Hills Cops 2. Uh, yeah. I, I, Bronson Pinchot. Pinochet. Pino, <laughs> Pinchot. Um, after 28 <laughs> years Axel? from Beverly Hills Cop 3. So um, then Kevin Bacon's in this one. He is, yeah, um, yeah. I don't know. I, I, I don't dislike this trailer. I think, I think it looks like it could be fun. I'm, I'm definitely interested to see if they. They pull gave it, it off. a budget, which is good, yeah. you know. And uh, so, Brad, would you like to see this get a theatrical release? Because right now they have not determined whether it will or not. Obviously, it's going to go to Netflix. I'm, but Netflix might give it a week or two in the theaters. I am it. always supportive of any movie that gets released in theaters before it goes to streaming. I would love to be able to see this in theaters. The first three yeah. movies. So were you all would see this releases. in theaters? Absolutely. Oh, I would. I would actually go out of my way to see this, and I okay. know I don't say that a lot but something like this that is just pulling at nostalgia for me okay i if they really and i know that uh, obviously you know notwithstanding mel gibson if for some reason they did a lethal weapon five mm-hmm. i would go see it in the theater like i want a diehard nine i'll go see it like i want to see those i don't think those, they're gonna make it i know die-hard. those things that i saw in the theater growing up though that's the things that i want to come back and support because i love the idea that those have fresh ideas and, and stories to tell i know that in hollywood Everybody, you know, wants to just take what already works and keep going. That's why they're, you know, Jason Bourne and and uh, w- 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 you know Matt, Matt Damon came back with Paul Green what Paul, Paul Greengrass mm-hmm. for the Jason Bourne movie that nobody needed. Yeah, right. That could have though been great. I'm always willing to give him a chance, you know. And it, I don't. I'm also one of those people that doesn't think that a bad uh, legacy sequel ruins the original trilogy. Yeah. I, I don't care at all. And so I want to see them remake everything because what if it's good? Would if they did another Lethal Weapon and Mel Gibson was in it, would you see it? I would. Okay. Yeah, I I, I love that. See, I, and again, I think that I think that Lethal Weapon gets slept on a little bit as far as what it did for what action movies are and what buddy cop films are. I think that the original Lethal Weapon is almost untouchable as far as what it did for buddy cop movies. I'm not sure if anyone sleeps on it. I mean, everyone pretty well regards Lethal Weapon as being like one of the greatest, you know, buddy buddy action cop movies. I think that it gets overlooked. Honestly, I do these days. All right, so big fan of Mel Gibson. <laughs> <laughs> We've established that multiple times. Give him podcast. another chance, Hollywood. <laughs> uh, yeah, so uh, Beverly Hills Cop, Axel F. When's it come out, Nate? They don't know yet. They actually have not released a date. Is there really it. not a release date? Nope. Oh, not yet. So, Brad, like I said, there's still. I, I read as I was researching for that that they're still debating whether or not they want to release it in the in the theater at all. Like you know, they're thinking about doing that. Oh, so they, they have not even can they have not committed to. A so date December twenty fifth, twenty twenty three. Those questions haven't been asked. I wonder answered. if they're going to uh, let the Beverly Hills Cop TV show be canon, because they did establish uh, that Eddie Murphy has the character has a son played by Brandon T. Jackson of Tropic Thunder fame, and uh, don't know if they're going to include that or not. I don't know. If My we, guess is no. I don't know if we said this before, but if comes out May seventeenth, so that'll be a uh, early. Is May summer blockbuster? Or no. Yeah, May. May the, is usually, now. usually the yeah. beginning of May. Yeah. It's, it's, Marvel that's, made that's that happen when the, the Fast Star Wars did Fast too. Actually, Furious. before that. Yeah. I don't know. I made that up. I think you're probably right. Fast and Furious came out. Yeah. Someone probably came out in May. Probably. Is there anything coming out right after the first of the year? Probably. <laughs> yes, but nothing good. Wonka's out now. I haven't. I, seen just, that yet. I don't know that I can sit through three hours and uh, fifty nine minutes of the Killers or a Flower Moon. I just don't know that I can want to watch it. It's, you know not, it's not four hours long. It's three hours and forty five minutes or whatever. Is I, it I, really I just, that long? I just don't know that I want to watch. That's it. ridiculous. It's it's so good. Seriously, if, and, if, and if you can pause Marty it, and if you can pause it, stop being a baby. I mean, come don't on. Don't pause just, it. Just, just pee. I just, just don't pee. know, man. Shut up, Nate. Four hours. It's not four hours. <laughs> It's three hours and fifty four minutes. It is with credits. <laughs> it's it's three hours and twenty six minutes. That is dumb. That is dumb. That's it's a, not. Did you watch Titanic, Nate? I hated it. You know that. Did you watch it? Yes. I. You made me. That was only three hours, though. Oh my god! Grow up. <sighs> it's just such a. That's a whole Sunday. You guys know I'd have to pee so many times. That's a whole day. It's a very good so, movie. Y- listen, Sunday morning, right? Ben Connors. He wakes up at ten. 
Yeah, no, I don't. Right. I text right. you guys he, early in he, the morning. I don't hear from you for he quite stir, some time. He stirs time. around. He starts the movie at 11. 7 o'clock at night, Killers of the Flower Wounds ends. Time to go back to bed. It's a whole <laughs> Sunday. I don't know. I guess I shouldn't be surprised that Ben is in support of a movie that really brings oh to light Native American God, plates. I but knew you were going to say that. Classic, yeah. hey, classic white guy. <laughs> uh, all right, Ben Conowitz. <laughs> <laughs> what was that? What was that? I just want to make sure everyone knows your first and last oh name. Oh my god! <laughs> so they know who to blame for genocide. <laughs> <laughs> That's it for the trailers. Bye. <laughs> Uh, no, I mean, that's uh, Ben didn't write a game, even though he said he was going to. He did, because I told you before, I can't write a game, I don't have time. Yeah, no. and, ben, and you're like, I got it, 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 Wow. <laughs> we kind of sound like seagulls there. You really did, that was mine, mine, mine. <laughs> what I did say at the beginning was, I want to write a lot of games for our 100th episode next time. No, no, no. In our text thread, you said, I got a game for tonight. Yeah, and then I decided to watch my, my movie instead. Oh, it's cool. So you lied. He didn't finish it because I came in and the movie wasn't done. It was the last scene, the last 30 seconds. It was not done. No, it was not the last you 30 seconds. It was It's like literally the last After 30 seconds. It's there Ryan and see Gosling where the sitting in a chair and true. he's about that to say something true. at a camera. Yep. And that's yep. it. That's all I missed. This motherfucker. It was, I got all the way. That's the whole movie. It's He's not going to say anything. It's going to, he's going to go like, and he's, it's going to cut to black. He's he like, he's like no, it's almost done. And it was like literally I know that for a, a third of the way. I've seen enough movies. He's not going to go and be like, well, let me just ruin everybody's lives. He's gonna. It's just, he's not going to say a goddamn thing. It's going to cut to black. I bet I you stopped guarantee. Usual Suspects before the last scene too, didn't you? <laughs> yeah. You fucking if, if that If this movie ends up having a big reveal like that, that it's shocking to me, I will eat my hat. There's no way it did that. It's so, it's but, so predictable wait, wait, that wait. that was never going to happen. You remember when he said, I don't want to give it away because of the spoilers. <laughs> I want to give it away because I haven't seen it. <laughs> Yes, it's too no, oh I didn't want to God. talk. I didn't want to give away the abortion stuff or the fact that it was the governor's baby and all that stuff. He doesn't even like finish movies anymore. I mean, this is just. <sighs> I saw it all the way up to the last scene in the last thirty seconds of the film, Brad. I don't even, do you guys even want to do the podcast anymore? <laughs> Nate's not watching his movies. Ben's watching half a movie. I watched ninety nine, literally ninety nine percent of it. You don't even know. I'm telling you right now. I know exactly how it just it'll fade to black. I guarantee it. <laughs> it was. I could write the ending to that film. I'm gonna find two new co-hosts because it's just not working out anymore. Do you, do, you, do you think you'd ask Mitch? Mitch McConnell? Oh, um, Mitch from New Zealand. Oh yeah. Actually. Hello, hello. My name's Mitch. That I know. Is, that is, well, first of all, that's a British accent. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds nothing like this. I bet. I bet, I bet. Mitch would watch his movies and he would appreciate them. Mitch. You would, he would. He's a good guy. I'm. Okay. <laughs> he couldn't even I say it. I know because it's Mitch and I love him. How do you fucking not? By the way, you guys should just meet Mitch. You got to meet Mitch. We that did. guy. We were here. No, no. no yeah, I, I mean, like, literally I'm like, on the podcast. I'm, I'm talking to anybody else in the world. If you if you run into a very handsome gentleman who's in his late twenties, coming to America from man. New Zealand, uh, man, to just give him a hug for us. Yeah, well, Mitch will be back in the United States relatively soon. He's probably not going to make it over here, but uh, Mitch, if you're out there, we love you. And we I mean, miss you. Wait, if? <laughs> He's out there. Mitch is out there. I don't know. I haven't checked his Instagram in the last couple of Mitch, minutes. Mitch, I love you, buddy. Uh, these guys might not, but I do. Who said that? You, Nate and Brad. What? You said you didn't love him. I never said anything. I never said that. No, we'll, we'll talk about this out off air. I love him more than you. <laughs> <laughs> that sounded like drunk also, red. And just to be, know, just, just to be clear, I mean on two different levels. I love him more than you love him, and I love him more than I love you. Whoa. Yeah. Okay, you know what? We're going to end on that. <laughs> Nate, uh, Merry Christmas, buddy. Hey, Merry Christmas. I Happy love Hanukkah. you very much. Brad, I do love you very much. Oh, Merry Christmas, Brad. I love you, too. Mm-hmm. Nate, nah, nah, I love you, too. Hey, you're the apple of my eye. And you are I apple. <laughs> Ashley, we're really sorry you had to be Peter Kelly for this episode. I do apologize. Uh, I apologize for nothing. I know you don't. Yeah, that's actually true. That's really on brand for you. <laughs> I expected it. Uh, where uh, where can people find you online, Brad? Uh, always online. At- okay. <laughs> Nate. <laughs> at Ethan underscore Anderton on Twitter. Slash home.com is where I'm always uh, writing about movies and TV shows. Make sure to check it out. And uh, yeah, whatever. Who cares? <laughs> Nate, you're on the Twitter, the uh, the X? Yeah. Yeah. Sure, me too. It's just getting worse. It is. It is. It's like my whole algorithm, and I don't like these things, but it's like getting more right-wingy all the time. Is yours as well? Uh, it's no. Like, it's like mine's more, not at all. Yours is just showing Joe Rogan over and over again. It feels like it. It feels like it. Or just to, Elon Musk. Stop like, listening to, to Joe Rogan's podcast, and yeah. then that'll happen. Mine, the thing that for me that sucks is just, I just hate seeing just 
terrible ads from like just the worst companies and also when you go to like see someone's tweet and look at their replies just seeing all the stupid blue checks of people who are just fucking crypto bros and just sacks of shit ben owns crypto i love my pillow (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> <laughs> all right guys well hey uh to our listeners out there uh if you want to give us a, a, an early christmas present you can just smash that subscribe button buddy you could just you could pull over the car tell the kids to shut the fuck up and uh and give us five stars we would love you forever anything else was that too awkward no i'm just waiting for you to end the podcast <laughs> i don't know what else to do other than i'm just sitting watching <laughs> merry christmas happy new year bye everybody bye Nah, cheating, eh?